is the president of the Mormon Transhumanist Association. Um, Lincoln is a professional software engineer. He has a background in both uh, philosophy and in business at the same time. Um, and we're very pleased to have him on the, on the roster today. We can use science and technology to enhance ourselves and our world. If limits continue to recede, we may radically extend our lives and abundantly expand our resources, such that present notions of poverty and even death would no longer apply. We may engineer new worlds and attain presently unimaginable degrees of flourishing. In so doing, we would change. We would be different than we are now to at least the extent that we are now different from our pre-human ancestors. We would be post-humans. Trust in our post-human potential is the essence of transhumanism. We trust that we can become post-humans, extrapolating technological trends into futures consistent with contemporary science, and acting pragmatically to hasten opportunities and mitigate risks. We trust that we should become post-humans, embracing a radical humanism that dignifies the ancient and enduring work to overcome and extend our humanity. Although denying superstition and hubris, our trust is more than rational and moral. The post-human aesthetic resonates with and shapes us, affecting our thoughts, our words, and our actions we want to become post-humans. We trust that we will not go extinct before becoming post-humans. This trust is the faith position, the basic assumption from which the new God argument begins. The new God argument is a transhumanist argument for faith in God, or trust in post-humans that may qualify as God in some religions. The argument combines religious titles with secular content to emphasize parallels that are essential to its conclusion. The argument does not prove that God exists. Rather, it proves that if we trust in our own post-human potential, then we should also trust that post-humans, more benevolent than us, created our world. Because such post-humans may qualify as God in some religions, the argument suggests that trust in our post-human potential should lead to faith in a particular kind of God. The new God argument arrives at its conclusion by combining three sub-arguments, each of which leverages the faith position. Number one, the angel argument <clears throat> proves that if pre-humans are probable, then post-humans probably already exist. Number two, the benevolence argument proves that if post-humans probably increase faster in destructive than defensive capacity, then post-humans probably are more benevolent than us. And then number three, the creation argument, proves that if post-humans probably create many worlds like those in their past, then post-humans probably created our world. Biologists trace human origins through billions of years of evolution. A broad confluence of observations indicates that our pre-human ancestors, from simple cells to hominids, generally increased in complexity at an accelerating rate, suggesting that initial evolution of pre-humans was less probable than subsequent evolution of humans. Yet, physicist Enrico Fermi observed that the stars present us with a paradox. Our universe appears old and large enough to have produced many planets capable of supporting pre-humans, but a great silence leaves no objective evidence for post-humans. If there's plenty of time and space for pre-humans, and if subsequent evolution of humans or equivalents is yet more probable, where are the post-humans? One possibility is that post-humans are improbable because their pre-human ancestors are already 
highly improbable. Even in a universe of 70 sextillion visible stars, maybe our planet is the only one on which life began. Counterintuitively, this would be good news for us, because it would explain an absence of post-humans with a reason in our past, rather than our future. However, we're discovering life in increasingly hostile environments on Earth. And we've also verified the presence of water on Mars. Such observations lead many to speculate that we'll soon discover life on other planets, and away from the possibility that pre-humans are improbable. Another possibility is that post-humans are improbable because humans and equivalents almost always go extinct before becoming post-humans, perhaps destroying ourselves with super weapons or environmental exploitation. This would be bad news because it puts the explanation for an absence of post-humans in our own future. Thus, the established, as established in the great filter argument, the great silence may imply a great filter in the vastness of time and space along evolutionary paths to post-humans, something may be filtering innumerable possibilities down to mere improbabilities. If pre-humans are improbable, then the filter would be in our past. Otherwise, the filter is in our future, and we probably will go extinct before becoming post-humans. The only alternative is that post-humans are actually probable, and we simply haven't yet found or recognized them. We don't have objective evidence for this possibility, but we know too little to reject it. As evidence for pre-humans mounts and post-humans remain elusive, some may despair. Others will embrace the angel argument and trust that post-humans probably already exist because our future correlates with their probability. A lack of evidence is not evidence to the contrary, and this lack enables reasonable hope. Anthropologists observe that our destructive capacity is increasing at an exponential rate. We have evidence that our... I'm recording this! Okay? Be quiet! Just messed up a 20-minute recording. <laughs> 